Hello and welcome to your latest monthly update from the Covidence UK study. My name's Adrian Martineau. I'm the Chief Investigator based here at Queen Mary University of London. So in recent webinars, uh, our colleague Julia Vivaldi presented data around the effects of delay from vaccination on severity and risk of getting COVID-19. And today I've prepared another talk uh, which covers the topic of vaccination, but this time it's covering a story that emerged just a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, many of you may have seen it in the press. Here's the uh, clipping from The Guardian. Um, and it's a story around a new jab that's been developed by the firm Moderna, which combines uh, a vaccine against SARS-CoV-2, the virus which causes COVID-19, and various uh, flu viruses as well. Um, and I would just highlight at the beginning of this talk that I'm not paid by Moderna. I've got no conflict of interest here whatsoever. This is simply uh, taken from material which is uh, publicly available on the internet. And if you want to read more about it, there's a couple of links under this uh, YouTube video. So the background to the story is that we know that uh, flu vaccines and SARS-CoV-2 vaccines, which protect against COVID-19, when they're given individually on their own, they do provide good protection against flu and COVID-19 respectively, particularly in the case of COVID-19 against uh, severe and fatal disease. And we also know from a randomised controlled trial that was done um, back when the pandemic was at its height, called the COMFLU-COV study, published Lancet 2021, that if you give um, a COVID-19 vaccine, in this case it was the AstraZeneca uh, or the BNT162B2, along with a flu vaccine, that that is safe and giving one vaccine at the same time as another doesn't impair the immune response to the other one. But we don't know whether giving a single jab which contains both vaccines, in other words a combination vaccine, uh, would work as well as giving the two separate ones. And obviously this could have logistic advantages because you only need to have one jab instead of two, but it also might provide a stronger protection. And the uh, trial which I presented back in uh, from 2021 actually only investigated uh, a COVID vaccine, one of which was a non-mRNA vaccine. And we know now that the, the mRNA vaccines such as Moderna and Pfizer did provide better protection uh, than the AstraZeneca vaccine. So the research question here is, does administration of a combination mRNA vaccine against flu and SARS-CoV-2 provide equivalent or even better protection than when these vaccines are administered uh, as single vaccines? Um, and so let me introduce to you the names of the candidate vaccines that are investigated in this study. The, the new one developed by Moderna is a combination vaccine. It's called mRNA1083. mRNA stands for messenger RNA. And this is basically the new generation of vaccine technology that proved so effective uh, during the pandemic. And this is effectively a combination of two existing vaccine candidates, both of them from Moderna, mRNA1010, which has been shown to be effective in generating immune responses to various strains of flu, and mRNA1283, which is Moderna's latest next generation uh, COVID-19 vaccine. And if you want to find out more about this study, it's registered on the uh, US National Institutes of Health Trials database called clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, again, there's a link under this video if you want to find out more about the study protocol. So in terms of who took part, there are actually around 8,000 people. So it's a massive study. Um, the inclusion criteria, so that means the criteria which everyone had to have in order to take part, but you had to be a healthy adult and they divided the participants into two groups according to age. There was a cohort A who were aged 65 plus and a cohort B who were aged 50 to 64 years old. And to take part you had to be fully vaccinated for COVID-19 with one of the primary series of vaccines and your last dose of vaccine had to be at least 90 days before taking part in the current trial. In terms of exclusion criteria if you've been acutely unwell 72 hours before starting the trial, you weren't eligible to take part. If you had an underlying illness, which in the judgment of the investigators could interfere with interpretation of the study, you couldn't take part. 
if you're taking systemic immunosuppressants for more than two weeks within six months before the start of the trial again you are ineligible as you would be if you received a seasonal influenza vaccine up to 150 days before this trial so i think it's important to understand here who could and who couldn't take part because this has implications for generalizability so who can we generalize the results of this trial to in other words we can't necessarily generalize them to people outside of these age groups or people who are having long-term immunosuppressant therapy so here's how the study worked as you can see on the left here we've got cohort a they're the adults aged 65 plus around 4,000 of them and on the right, we've got cohort B, which is the younger group, age 50 to 64. And this was a double blind placebo controlled trial. So people who agreed to take part were then randomized to receive one of two interventions. They'll either receive to the uh, randomized to the intervention arm where they received the combination vaccine, mRNA 1083, plus a placebo injection. So they, everybody got two jabs. It was just that the people who got the combination vaccine, their second jab was salty water, effectively. And then the comparator arm were people who got two separate jabs, uh, one of uh, an anti-flu vaccine and one of an anti-COVID vaccine. Uh, in both cases for cohort A and B, the anti-COVID vaccine investigated was Spikevax from Moderna. Um, for the older cohort, the flu vaccine they got was one called Fluzone HD. And for the younger cohort, the flu vaccine they got was Fluarix. And the outcomes presented here are actually the antibody responses and adverse events. So safety data at day 29 post vaccination. Um, I hasten to add that there will be a further report on um, data relating to a risk of getting flu and COVID-19 and long term safety down the line. So before I present the results, of course, I just want to highlight that these, unlike most of the presentations I do, are results from a press release and not from peer reviewed publication. But I've decided to cover this topic because I think it'll be of general interest. And I don't think we have particular reason to uh, doubt the hard data that are presented in that uh, press release. These are usually uh, pretty much uh, exactly the same as what tends to come out in the scientific paper a few months down the line. So let me just orientate you for how these results are going to look. Um, these are the antibody responses uh, for cohort A, that's people age 65 plus. And on the left here, we've got antibodies to different sorts of virus. So as you'll be aware, there are various different types of flu virus. Uh, these are the three that they checked for antibodies against. These are the ones that tend to cause the worst disease. And then at the bottom here, we've got a strain of SARS-CoV-2, which is in currently in circulation, the Omicron variant, I'm sure you'll all be familiar with. So what's going to come in here are what are called geometric mean ratios. So these are measures of how strong an antibody response is in the response to the combination vaccine compared to the single vaccines given alone. So the single vaccines given alone are what we call the referent category, they're the comparator category. So let me introduce you to the findings now, first of all, for flu. So what we have here is a ratio of how much higher the antibodies were with the combination vaccine than they were for the flu vaccine given alone. So you can see that there's basically a 15 or 16 percent increase in antibodies to this strain of flu, H1N1, if you're given the combination vaccine compared to if you're given the flu vaccine alone. And these 95% confidence intervals tell us that it's between 9.4% to 22% higher, with a point estimate of around 16% higher. And you see the same trend for uh, antibodies against this second uh, flu type and this third flu type as well. So the bottom line is that anti-flu antibodies were between 6 and 16% higher with the combination vaccine than they were when the flu vaccine was given um, uh, as a separate vaccine. And then when you look at the combination vaccine for the antibodies to SARS-CoV-2, these were 64% higher than when the spike vax was given as a separate vaccine alongside the flu zone. And essentially we see similar trends here for cohort B, the younger participants 
in the trial. So the anti-flu antibodies were 22 to 41% higher with a combination vaccine. And the anti-SARS-CoV-2 antibodies were 31% higher with a combination vaccine. What about safety? Very important. Um, and essentially, it's good news. The um, new combination vaccine, mRNA 1083, showed an acceptable tolerability safety profile with the majority of adverse reactions grade one or two. So that is the least severe um, and similar to other licensed vaccines. Most commonly solicited adverse reactions were pain at the injection site, fatigue, myalgia and headache. So pretty consistent with the studies that we've done in Covidence, uh, looking at adverse reactions to um, other mRNA vaccines, notably Moderna and Pfizer. So obviously we're waiting for more data here, uh, in particular longer term follow up to see if the antibody results, which look so promising, are mirrored by protective clinical results. In other words, we want to see whether having a better antibody response does associate with better protection against particularly severe COVID-19 and flu. But we have good reason to believe that's the case because we know from many, many other clinical trials that these antibody responses do tend to align with clinical protection. And then assuming that that is shown to be the case and those results will come out uh, a few months down the line, um, Moderna will engage with the regulators and potentially this jab could be uh, publicly available uh, from 2025 on. So just to summarise then, the bottom line here is that a combination mRNA vaccine against SARS-CoV-2 and flu uh, stimulates better antibody production than when separate vaccines against SARS-CoV-2 and flu are administered at the same time. So all that remains is for me to once again thank everyone watching for your time, not just in watching this webinar, but in continuing to complete our monthly questionnaires and I look forward to catching up with you again next month. Bye for now.